it's Christine Ballas and wanted to let you know about a feast that's coming up this week. It is the Feast of Lights, the Feast of Dedication, otherwise known as Hanukkah. And here I have the menorah or the Hanukkah of Hanukkah. And, um, you know, in this year of the door, I was meditating upon the door and Hanukkah. And I realized that all the feasts of the Lord really are doors. They're invitations to come in, to enter in and see Jesus in the midst of them. So enjoy the teaching coming up and see Jesus in the midst of Hanukkah. Blessings, guys. Hi there, this is Christine Ballas, and I wanted to share with you about an appointed time coming up on God's calendar this month in Kislev. It is the Feast of Hanukkah. And I'm sure many of you have heard about Hanukkah, but perhaps you don't know exactly what it means or why people celebrate it. So I'm hoping to shed some light on that today. I want to give you a little historical background, see how we can see Jesus in the midst of Hanukkah, what lessons we can apply to our lives, and even consider celebrating Hanukkah this year. So let's jump right in and let's start with the word Hanukkah. And the word Hanukkah means dedication in Hebrew. And so it's also called the Feast of Dedication or the Feast of Lights. And this is in regarding the dedication or rededication of the Second Temple. And it was during that time period in Israel's history where Greece invaded them. And there was a Greek invader named Antiochus Epiphanes who came in and desecrated the temple. And he slaughtered a pig on the altar. He erected a statue of Zeus right there in the temple. And he also outlawed the Jews from studying the Torah and observing the commandments of the Lord. Now, you would think that the people of God would just be outraged about this. But the truth of the matter is, they actually kind of just went along with it. And you would think, like, how could they do that? Well, it's called apostasy. And it happened then and it even happens now. It's that compromising with the things of God. Little by little, you start falling away. And before you know it, you are far away from the heart of God. And that is what happened there. And that is how the enemy didn't even have to break into the temple. The people of God just let them in little by little. And before they knew it, they took over the temple. Well, there was a small band of brothers called the Maccabees. And their name meant hammer. And God gave them a strategy how to hammer the enemy. And this strategy is find, found in the Bible in Zechariah. It says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And they took back the temple and defeated the enemy. And there in the midst of the rubble, they found one flask of sanctified oil. And that oil was used to light the lampstand in the temple. And that lampstand looked something like this. And this was the lampstand that God gave to Moses, this pattern for him to build it. And it was to be built of, uh, designed of solid gold and it was to burn continuously. So when the Maccabees found the one flask of oil, they knew that they didn't have enough oil to burn continuously. In fact, that one flask probably would only burn for one night, if that. And so they took that one flask and lit the menorah. And the, and the miracle of Hanukkah is that God multiplied that sanctified oil and it lasted for eight nights. And that is why Hanukkah is called the Feast of Dedication and it's celebrated for eight nights. Now during Hanukkah, people light up a menorah, but it looks different than this one. It actually looks like this. And not so much the size, but the number of branches. The original menorah has seven branches and the menorah of Hanukkah, or known as the Hanukkah, has nine branches. 
and it commemorates the eight nights of Hanukkah and has one central branch which will light up all the other candles as we'll see next. But it was based on the seven branch menorah. So let's look at this Hanukkah of Hanukkah in case you guys want to um, buy one for yourself and, and enter into the Feast of Hanukkah, I want to explain to you how you can light up how it's done. So right in the middle of the lampstand is one um, branch that is raised higher than the other and that is for the Shema candle or that means this servant candle and it's this servant candle that actually lights all the other candles. So every night a candle is put into the menorah to represent that night. So you start by putting in the servant candle in the middle and then the first night gets put all the way to the right and you put in every night from right to left just as you read Hebrew and they're lit from right to left as well. So you light the servant candle, you take a match, you light that up, you take this servant candle and you light the first night and you put the servant candle right back in its spot and you enjoy the glow and light of the menorah. Now those candles burn down as you can see the wax um, from last year is still on ours here and so the next night you take the servant candle you put it back in the middle and you put the second night in right here and then you put the first night behind it you light up the servant candle again and then you light whatever that night is currently so you would light the second night and then behind it you would light the night before put the Shema candle right back in its place and again enjoy the lights of the menorah and there is great expectation as night by night the um, whoops there we go night by night the the menorah um, increases in in light and it's such a um, just a beautiful time of rest and reflection especially as you meditate on Jesus as we'll get into and so every night you just add one more night so you have a total of eight nights with that central candle here in the middle so this is how you light the menorah like I said you can buy these anywhere or you can put your own candles together and just always having one higher or a little elevated than the rest as the servant candle lights the rest of them. Now also another tradition during Hanukkah is to spin the dreidel right here and um, many of you know the song about the dreidel and it features four letters of the Hebrew alphabet and it's an acronym for a great miracle happened there and that's referring to the miracle of the multiplying um, oil there during the Maccabees time. So that's another tradition. And another tradition with regarding the oil is uh, many people make foods fried in oil like latkes or fried donuts. So I encourage you to enter in and celebrate the miracle of the oil. Okay, so that is how you light up your menorah. And now, or Hanukkah, I should say. And now I want to um, talk about how we can see Jesus in the midst of Hanukkah. Well, first of all, the only place where Hanukkah is mentioned, it's only one time in the scriptures, and it's in the Gospels. It's in the book of John, chapter 10. And it says, at this, at the time of the Feast of Dedication, which was Hanukkah, it took place in Jerusalem, and it was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So I just love that, how this Jewish Jewish festival is right here in the Gospels and it's talking about how Jesus was celebrating it so that just inspires me to celebrate it as well now I can't help but see Jesus here in the midst of Hanukkah right here centrally located as the servant candle and he is risen right he is risen indeed he is alive and he came not to be served, but to serve, right? He said that in the book of Matthew chapter 20. So he serves, he serves us and he lights us up. 
And also this servant candle is held by the right hand. Again, we see Jesus. He sits at the right hand of the Father. And when we are in him, we are seated in heavenly places, seated with him. And of course, Jesus is the light of the world. Consider this scripture, John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Here in the darkest month of all, we have the light of the world glowing here in our midst. It's Jesus in the midst of Hanukkah. Okay, so how can we apply some lessons from Hanukkah? Well, one thing that I saw this year was that there are nine candles here on the menorah, and this is occurring, this feast, in the ninth month. And nine in the Hebrew alphabet is connected with the letter Tet, which is a letter of choice. It's life or death. So the Lord is saying he's constantly calling us to choose him, to have that relationship. He wants to make sure that we are united in Jesus, that we have chosen him. So if you've never done so before, I encourage you, all you have to do is believe on the name Jesus and you shall be saved. And when you do, you will have that life and life abundantly. And he gives us his Holy Spirit. And so in Corinthians, it says that we actually become the temples of the Holy Spirit. So we can dedicate our temple or rededicate our temple to him. And also in Galatians, it says that the fruit of the Spirit, they're listed, there are nine. It is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I really see that every night of, of, the, of the Feast of Hanukkah, you can even focus on each one of those that are listed here in Galatians 5. This is the promise of the Holy Spirit that resides in us. Those of us who have called Jesus into our hearts and have accepted him. So we have the Holy Spirit. We have all the love, all the peace, all the patience that we will ever have. We just have to renew our mind with the truth and allow his Holy Spirit to flow through us. So that is just a couple lessons there. Another lesson is um, the picture of the vine and the branches. This menorah is just a picture of John 15, where Jesus says, abide in me and I will abide in you. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So abide in me and you will bear much fruit. Just like these candles, they abide in this lampstand and they are lit up, not by their own strength, but by this servant candle. And so we don't have to strive to bear fruit. It comes automatically as we abide in Him. Also, the Lord is a servant and a student is not greater than His teacher. So as, as students of the Lord, as servants of His, we are also called to be servants and serve others. So let this be a picture and a reminder to serve others. And also, whatever we sanctify, to the Lord, he will multiply, just as the Maccabees did. They had that small flask of oil and they didn't look at it and curse it and say, this isn't enough. They actually thanked the Lord and blessed it and then lit up the menorah and God multiplied it. So whatever you have in your hand that looks like not enough, whatever seems like it's just too little, don't curse it. I encourage you to bless it and thank the Lord for it and give it to him and he will multiply it just as he multiplied the oil and just as he multiplied the loaves and fish. Okay, and also the Lord wants us to stand like the lampstand and he will light us up and he wants us to, to stand like the Maccabees. He wants us to stand for him. And you know that word apostasy, that means to fall away also means to be standoffish and the Lord is saying don't be standoffish stand for me and and I will lift you up stand for my word and I will light you up so let's stand for the Lord here in the midst of Hanukkah and lastly the Lord wants us to shine you know he calls us to be the light of the world and it says in Matthew 5 it says you are the light of the world a city on a hill cannot be hidden does anyone light a lampstand 
and then put it under a basket? No, it lights the lamp and puts it on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. So the Lord wants you to be a witness of the light of the world within you as he, as he lifts you up on this lampstand. Let him shine through you as you abide in him. So can you see Jesus here in the midst of Hanukkah? I think it's pretty plain to see. So if you want to enter into the Feast of Hanukkah, it starts this month, Kislev, on the 24th day. So come, let us adore Jesus right here in the midst of Hanukkah. Thanks for listening, guys, and be blessed. Bye-bye.